Hey everyone, how's it going? It's me, it's Korzak. Welcome back to part 7 of the Dark Cloud 2 Platinum Walkthrough. So in this episode, we're actually going to get every missable scoop in Chapter 2. And we're also going to 100% the Giorama. I will leave um, timestamps in the description or a comment or both to each section. So you just kind of know exactly where to go. Master Utan here is a scoop, but we're going to save him for our getting every picture and scoop in Chapter 2 video. Hey, isn't that Master Utan? You know that thing? Is it safe to go closer? Yeah, it's alright. He's a pretty well-behaved monster. He doesn't hurt people. But it looks like something's wrong with him. Is he okay? What's the matter? Are you hurt? Humans, hmm? Don't see them every day. Now that I think about it, there was another half pint bumbling around earlier. This forest started to get nice and crowded these days. Never mind that. You look like you're in pain. What happened? It's pitiful, really, but I was awful hungry and somehow got my hands on the forbidden fruit. When I did, my whole body just up and froze like this, and I couldn't move. My fault for messing with the Holy One's food. I'll bet the Holy One must be pretty ticked off right about now. So you ate one of these, huh? It's a poison apple. No wonder you don't feel so good. Never mind, don't worry. You'll feel better after you rest for a while. By the way, who's this Holy One? The Holy One is a great fish who's brought happiness to this forest. A holy fish? Monica, maybe this has something to do with those three back there. Aha! Uh -huh. I think I'm starting to understand now. This Holy One must have bewitched those three somehow. I bet the Holy One is really a big fish monster. Well then, Master Utan, where can we find this Holy One? Didn't you see a big old swamp on your way here? They say the Holy One lives in that swamp. I haven't seen it myself yet. Swamp, huh? Yes, I think so. Yeah, I remember. Let me see. A big fishy monster named the Holy One that hangs out in the swamps bewitching people. <laughs> this ought to be fun. Let's go check it out. Right. Thanks, Master Utan. You've been a big help. Hey, don't forget to mind your manners when you're dealing with the Holy One. So it's not very far away. It's literally just this pond right here. Why don't we try fishing it out? Huh? Fish it out? Well, we've got a fishing rod. We know the Holy One likes poison apples. And we've got plenty of bait. Let's give it a try. Go on now, try it. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, she doesn't have to do anything. Maybe that's why she's so eager to do it. <laughs> Fishing feels better with vibration on, so I, I may turn it on. That's it. The game kind of takes over for you from here. Whoa! 
what's going on here? There's a hook stuck in my beautiful lips. Is this your doing? I won't forgive this. You're the one that made the little ones act so strangely. You must change them back. Oh, yes. More victims of my beauty. Really, beauty can be a curse, you know. Anyway, why are you here? I already told you. I want you to change those little furbits back to the way they were. Well, such a thing would be quite simple, my dears. But nothing comes for free, you know. Business is business, and everything's business. Oh boy, this is gonna be another pain. So what do you want us to do? So the little boy understands, too. Listen carefully, then. I won't say this again. Mwah. As everyone knows, I'm very fond of beautiful things. But here's the thing. Recently, you know, I've become a bit, well, dirty. Oh, it's so embarrassing. But listen to this. There's a fish called the Prisleen Fish that can clean up all the dirt from my body. So what I'd like you to do is go over there and catch it for me. You've got all that fishing gear, so you may as well use it, don't you think? Well, do you get my drift? <laughs> a Prisleen Fish? Okay, and when we get it, we want you to return those three back to normal. Yes, I know, I know. You don't have to tell a man twice. What? You're a guy? I'll be waiting. Alrighty, so this is one of the missable scoops. So just take a picture of this guy and that's it. That's all you do. That's all you gotta do. Uh, so after you give him the Priscline fish, he'll disappear forever and you'll never get the chance at this photo again. So you gotta do it right now. Now we're gonna give him the fish. I think this is the bigger one, so I'll give this one to him. The smaller one. Lovely bristling fish will kiss all the grime off my body and make me look stunning again. <laughs> yeah. oh. Right, you promised return those three to normal. This guy's laughing like he's a horse or something. If horses could laugh. Oh yes, of course. Is this what you were after? So now, those three are better? Well, why don't you go have a look? Well, uh, please excuse me. I wish you the best. <laughs> well, he's certainly cheerful. I'll give him that. Let's go and look. Right.
Hey! How is everyone? Oh, they suddenly returned to normal. I'm so relieved, I can't tell you. What in the world have I been doing? I cannot remember a darn thing. Last thing I remember, I was thirsty. And I drank some of that swamp water. I can't remember anything past that either. What in the world happened to us? You've all been under the Holy One's spell. The Holy One? Who's that? It's a fish monster that lives in the swamp. You guys almost ended up trapped here forever. Oh, that's crazy. Well, what are we going to do about Holly? Oh, sure. We got to look for Holly. Hold on, guys. We should come up with a plan first. Let's go back to Sindane. It's you! Is everyone all right? Boss! We were gone a long time. What have you been up to? We'll tell you everything later. What about Holly? Where is she? Where's Holly? I am sorry, but Holly isn't anywhere. Okay! Hold it a minute. Listen, you two, now that we've got everyone together, it's time for us to hold up our end of the deal. In return, can I ask you two to go search for Holly for us? By the look of things, I guess Holly really did find that legendary rainbow butterfly. It must be true that all those who lay eyes on it never leave the forest again. The only way to find Holly is to find the rainbow butterfly first and fall under the same spell. And then, just break the spell, of course. Rainbow butterfly, huh? I don't know. Do you really think it exists? Alrighty, we got ourselves a deal. We'll help you guys out, and you go find Holly for us. Alright? All clear? Okay, we'll try. It's settled, then. You better get a move on, lads. Yeah! What are they going to do? I have no idea. What in the world's that noise? What's that thing? What the heck is that? I don't know. <gasps> wow! Whoa! I can't believe it! This is just amazing! What an incredible machine! <laughs> How cool is that? You like that, eh? With this thing, you can make anything you want. Plant trees, build houses, whatever. Truly amazing! Can I get on board? 
Sure, by all means. This here is the control room for our pal, Carpenterian. This is the ultimate building machine, forged from all of the technology handed down through our fervent generations. Besides houses and buildings, it can build lots of natural things too, even trees and rivers. Looks like we can bring back Jurak's origin point with this. Hey, don't forget to find Holly for us now. Yes, we know. What's that? That's the reactor where you put the geostones. Geostones? Yep. Geo stones are mysterious stones invented by the ancients. The geo stones contain all the advanced knowledge of the ancient ones. Carpenterian is a revolutionary machine that uses the technology packed inside the geo stones to make new things. When you put a geo stone into the reactor, Carpenterian can star the data for building whatever is recorded on the geo stone. That way, you can make new things. Just to warn you, even with the necessary data, some buildings can only be built on certain types of land. I think it's like Monica said, someone changed the forest here. But if you collect geostones hidden in the forest, you just might be able to change this place back to the way it used to be. Sounds great. We'll do it. Let's go then, Monica. You bet. We're counting on you to fight, honey. Look! Huh? It's a time gate. You can pass between this time and mine through this gate. You just use that stone, you're at Lamelia. What? You mean this red stone? That's right. It's not just a pretty rock, you know. It's got mystical powers that let you pass through time. And the one I've got is the blue at Lamelia. They each have their own powers. Red brings you to the future, and blue to the past. With the two of them, we can use this gate to move back and forth between past and future. When we get Jurak's origin point back, we can use this gate to go see him. Hold in a minute. My father gave me this stone. Why did he have something like this? They say an Atlamilia can pick who it wants to belong to. It must have picked your father. And then it picked you, Max. What? Me? Anyway, the main thing now is to get Jurak back. I bet Jurak can tell us all kinds of things. About Griffin, about the rainbow butterfly. I guess you would know. Now we've really got to get to work. We have to get Sindane back into shape and bring back the great elder, Jurak. All right. Well, it's time to go back to the Rainbow Butterfly Wood, because we have uh, some progress to make. We need Geostones before we can really do much.
We have to go back here for one last time. Well, not the last time because we need to uh, get a picture of Master Utan here, but that'll be in a later video. We just have to talk to him and he'll let us pass. There's some poisonous apples up here. At least that's what I think they are. Hey, you're back. Master Utan, you're looking a lot better now. Sure. I just ate something I wasn't supposed to after all. I'm going to be more careful from now on. Yeah, that's a good idea. By the way, we want to ask you a favor. Hmm? We want to get through here. Do you think you can move that boulder for us? Oh, that? Piece of cake. Wait right here. You're so strong. How about that? Guess I still got it. Ow! Are you okay? <laughs> oh boy, I've gone and sprained my back. I think I'll rest here a while. You go on ahead. Maybe you should exercise a little more often. But thanks a lot. You really helped us out. Right. We'll see you later. What she said is true. If you do some kind of physical activity, it never really gets easier, but it will prevent injury. This is a geostone. Yeah, probably. <laughs> well, since this is a ride pod level, we may as well just use the ride pod. And I forgot to have Cedric fix my stuff. Oh well. Literally the first enemy gives us the saw. <laughs> We can already just move on. Well, we do have to get the Geostone first anyway. This one punch is good enough for those guys. Scrap metal.
Okay, we got a map. I like the music in this forest, it's relaxing. This might be a little more tricky. Or not at all. <laughs> I don't like these things with Steve. And, yeah, here's a lot of them. You gotta be careful with these things, they attack very suddenly. Well, here's our Geostone. So now we could quite easily leave if we wanted to, because we have everything we need. But we may as well get the uh, metal for Steve, or for only using Steve. There's not much more to explore anyway. Oh yeah, see, that's what I mean. I'm probably going to have to use some Ride Pod Fuel. I'm definitely going to have to use some Ride Pod Fuel. I only have one, unfortunately. I need to start breaking more rocks. Just not in this floor or I won't get the metal. <laughs> Got a mimic. Nice. There. Are you don't see that every day. These coin, these coin tosses are very close together. I kind of saw that coming. We're still gonna leave and have Cedric fix our stuff though, because he can refuel Steve for me. Nice. Well, that was pretty easy. But uh, we're gonna go to Cedric to get some upgrades for the ride pod. Oh yes, when we literally cleared out everything <laughs> and completed the entire map, that's when we should get the magic crystal. That's usually how it always works. <laughs> well, we got the metal so we can break rocks now. I think there was one over here. No, it's not a big deal. We do have to go back to Sindane anyway, because Konda will give us some stuff now that we have a Geo Stone. Well, we don't have to, but it's ideal if we do. Right, he's not voice acted. Hello! Huh? Well, looks like you found some geostones. Now then, let's use the Carpetarian to rebuild the forest. Come along with me.
Here's a little present from us. We gathered some things you'll need to rebuild the forest. Even if you have the Carpenterian and Geostones, you can't get anything done without materials. But you know, your item bag looks mighty small to me. No room for anything. Tell you what, I'm gonna do you a big favor here. Let's make that bag bigger. Just so you know, I'm not always this generous. I just happen to be in a giving mood today. <laughs> Now you gotta call the Carpetarian to you. To stand on the Georama map, press the select button. Go ahead and try it. This is a Geostone. It's filled with the wisdom of the ancients. When you put these in the reactor, you can build more types of things with the Carpeterian. Just various things that we need. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Geostones not only have info on how to build things, but data on how to develop a better future. As you build the new world, you can see how it's going with the with the Analyze command on the Georama menu. Now in the upper right of your Georama menu, you'll see this thing that says Pollen Remaining. For things to exist, there requires a certain type of energy. We call that energy Pollen. There's a limit to the amount of Pollen you can have on the Georama field, and the Carpeterian can't let you go over that limit. You remember that now. If you ever want to know anything else, you can just ask me with your help receiver, I'll fill you in. Now then, I think I'll leave the rest up to you young folks and get myself onto the train thingamajiggy. I'll be in the last car, so be sure to show your face once in a while. Okay, dokie. If you ever need Georama materials, I should be able to help. Okay then, let's get started. Are you all set? Yeah, this guy has literally everything you need. <laughs> you can just buy everything you need from him. Um, yeah, so let's just go over to the station for now. Repair robot parts. Um, well, I mean, we got that coin, so... Oh, we do need to upgrade the ride pod, actually. So you can actually craft this and this, but for now, I'm just gonna buy it. Ah, crap. I forgot about that. Yeah, so his core is not strong enough for, uh... Alright, so he's going to need more experience. You do have to level up your core at least once before you can equip both of these. Uh, I do recommend that you do get both of them. They're pretty useful to have. Especially the caterpillar. You do, you do want to have that one for sure. It uh, makes the, uh, the boss fight in this area significantly easier to do. In fact, I actually don't even know how to do the boss fight without Steve. You, you have to have the, uh, the barrel cannon that we just bought, and the caterpillar makes things significantly easier by uh, making him quiet when he's moving. Sorry if there's any background noise, there's some leaf blowers outside. So we aren't going to bother going for Max's gun only metal, because that's... It's not impossible, but it, it'll take way too long. It'll be significantly more efficient later on. Well, we need to upgrade Steve's core, so we may as well play on him a little bit.
bad camera angle. Ah, oh, nice. I love getting the map early on. You can calculate the most efficient routes. We're basically going to be ignoring Monica for now. In theory, you could literally beat this game without ever playing Monica outside of her boss fights. <laughs> but it is definitely worth leveling up both of them. And even though I'm ignoring Monica now, that's not something that uh, is done throughout the playthrough or anything. Because you do, it is a good idea to have her leveled up. And I mean, if you're doing a platinum walkthrough, you have no choice but to play her anyway because there's the achievement for getting the best sword and the best armlet for her. Something I realized is we haven't gotten a clown chest yet. Basically all that is is um, a, a chest can have a clown inside and uh, he'll give you a red present or a yellow present, you can pick one. Usually it's like crystals or a coin, which can be used to give your weapon a special effect, or it might be a weapon, or usually just anything good. And then sometimes it's just a completely useless material. But clown chests have a higher chance of giving you something really useful. You have to get off the ride pod to use these things. That's about right. There's a lot of rocks here. One of these might have some ride pod fuel, so it's definitely worth breaking. Although I don't think uh, rocks break like wood. Like the sound effect for them breaking is kind of just sounds like the wooden crate breaking. Like, if you can manage to actually, like, break a rock into pieces like that, I do not think it would sound like this. Yeah, I'll just- I'll take him out with Max, why not? Or he'll just dodge everything. There we go, that's some pretty decent experience. Doesn't seem like there's any mimics on this floor. So once you get the fishing rod, you can actually like fish in these floors too for a metal. So basically I would get a metal if I went and caught a fish that's over 60 centimeters. We aren't going to worry about that for now though. I'll make a video talking about the aquarium a little bit more later. Not too much later because it is good to level your fish up during your playthrough so you don't have to grind so much later all at once. I'm a pixie. And this is a max only level too. There's a show called The Fairly Odd Parents, and 
whenever I got to this level in this game and I read I'm a Pixie, I would just always think about the uh, hip hop song that they play in that in that show. I found it kind of funny. These pixies are weak against Max's gun from what I remember. We're getting the saw very early in all of these levels. Well, I mean, we're pretty much done here. There's no reason to stay, so we're just gonna head out. Although I kind of want to level up his guns, so maybe one more enemy. Let's just eat some bread quickly. There's a lot of chests here, so it might be worth opening them. Let's take a look at his gun quickly. Yeah, it's plus one. Yeah, so we can level his gun up, or we can build it up right now if we really wanted to. I think that's a good idea, actually, because it's not really necessary for getting synthesis points on here, in my opinion, because we're going to be getting this gun to bell trigger, we're going to get it to plus five and then just break it down after and put it onto the Jirak gun that we get at the end of this chapter for 100% Giorama. So boom, just like that, we were able to get Max's dad to join us on the train now. So that's all you really need. Just a map. Ah, oh, beautiful. I'm glad I opened these chests. A Mimic. I kind of saw that coming. When there's a lot of chests on the floor, there's usually going to be mimics. And if it's in like the second half of the dungeon. There are there are no mimics in like the very first floor of dungeons or anything. Ah, King Mimic. Alright, let's get out of here. We'll go have Cedric fix our stuff up. Since we're out here, we'll have Eric um, make us more bombs, too. We will need them in the next chapter. Now we'll get Borneo to rejoin us so we can have some help getting mats. Or getting more mats from the enemies. Legendary Killer Snake. This is another ride pod. Ride pod only floor. 
That's probably a good thing, actually, because it should get us to the experience amount that we need, really. Huh. <laughs> they literally... The le he's legendary. He's literally the first thing there. I wasn't so legendary. And he went down in two hits. It was a lot cooler in Dark Cloud 1. <laughs> This is probably probably a pretty small area. Always pick exploding. That poison's no bit. In fact, I could probably just leave it untreated since uh, we're just going to be playing as as the ride pod anyway. You can't actually die from poison in this game. So there's no real risk as long as I stay on Steve when I'm around enemies. A lot of ranged enemies here. Oh wow. I, I just got a double shot at the perfect timing. And it just so happened to move the camera angle at the perfect time. That was really lucky. I don't think I've actually ever seen that before. That was cool. The slash branch. I did play Guitar Hero on the PS2, so I also got reminded of Slash when I would see the Slash branch. <laughs> this is the right one. So there's going to be two exits on this floor, actually, but one will be kind of protected by a barrier. We can't actually go down that one um, at this point in the game. That's something that has to wait until later. Who knows, if this heals us, we won't have to exit out of the dungeon after. Not only did it not heal us, oh, <laughs> halved his HP. He doesn't even need it anyway. Although we will probably leave this dungeon anyway, just so we can upgrade Steve's core. Yeah, when you use this thing, it'll sometimes fire a second shot. Usually for no more durability cost. You can't really account for it, so that's not the kind of thing you can just assume will happen here and there. It just kind of happens when it does. Excuse me. Oh, we still haven't gotten the Geostone, actually. In fact, do we even have the Saw? Oh yeah, we do. Alright. Monica has a sword, by the way, but we need a stick to get rid of those spider webs. Makes a lot of sense, right? <laughs> The gateways in the later levels are more realistic, but in this one, it doesn't make any sense. Oh, wow. He got the the, time, the short wipeout time one, too. I wasn't expecting that. Not complaining, though. Something dropped from there. I wonder what it is. We have a lot of flame crystals. Bread. Oh, I mean, that's something we need, too. 
But I am hoping for ride pod fuel. I saw one more over here too. A lot of rocks pretty close together. When I do the fishing challenge, I like to um, turn the minimap off because it's not necessary. Uh, let's try for uh, the fishing achievement at least one time in this one. Why not? We do need fish anyway. Okay, apparently you can't fish in the river. It's weird. Doesn't matter. It's, this is something, uh, this is the kind of thing that we are going to have to come back for later anyway. There's no way to know, there's no way to know what the rocks are going to contain or if they're going to contain anything. You just kind of have to break them open and hope you get lucky. I would say there's normally like a 10% chance they'll actually drop something. No, oh, maybe a higher, higher than that, like 25% of the time it'll usually contain an item. Time to upgrade the core. Now we can uh, equip this. Cool. Clear all without healing. I don't think that'll be particularly hard. Three seconds later ends up healing. <laughs> uh, probably not. We're gonna have full HP, so it's no big deal. Even if I get hit, as long as I don't heal, it's no problem. And we don't actually have to beat every enemy in this floor. Alright, so yeah. Steve is, uh quieter now. He's not so noisy when he moves. And it's actually realistic too. Because uh, there's enemies in the last... There's There are enemies for where they will pick up if you if you're kind of going near them. And if you have the caterpillar, you're significantly quieter. So it ends up not being a big deal. Uh, that, that, that wasn't the right wording. Um, what I mean is like they won't catch you if you have the caterpillar equipped because you're quiet, so they won't hear you. So, like, it's actually kind of realistic at, at that point. That's somewhere we're going to have to go back later. I just have a feeling the geostone's behind there. Watch us get all the way to the other end of the map to get the uh, chest to have the slash branch, and then we have to come back. Oh wow, it, the map is actually set up for where it could be like that. Oh, although the stone's right there, so not that bad. Okay, this isn't going too well. I'm supposed to do this without healing and I'm taking big damage. I could just get on Steve and have this go by super easily, but I do need to start leveling up Max again. Is some big tiger griffin looking thing over there. Now well, there's our branch. We might have to go over there to get the saw, who knows. Any enemy could have it.
we don't have it, so anything's possible, really. I think I might circle back over there just in case, because I don't want to get all the way to the end and not have the saw, because some random enemy in the bottom left corner has it. That would kind of suck. break this. I don't think we can buy ride pod fuel now. Yeah, from what I remember, uh, Cedric's the only option for a little while, until chapter 5, I think. And it's not a, it's not a cheap item to buy, either. You can invent it and make it yourself, I believe. I don't remember what's actually required for that, though. Uh, material-wise. Just one enemy. Is he hiding the saw? He probably is. Yes, he is. I knew it. I called it. I knew it. That's just how things work. <laughs> yeah, we can build this thing up now. I think I actually need like 31 attack on it. Oh no, we need even more than that. I think this will be enough, however. Yes. Smash Ranch. So from what I remember, we need to go the chill route to make this into a hammer. But we're going to leave that for now. Once Max actually has a hammer for a weapon, it doesn't really matter after that. Because he just builds it up, there's no really... You don't have to think about it. As soon as he actually has a hammer, you just level it up until the max, and then you have the legend. Monica, however, is different. She has, like... <laughs> oh man, she has, like, six ultimate swords for some reason. And they're, it's a very nuanced path. You kind of have to use one of those, uh... To get the Island King, there's, like, three different possibilities. It's kind of hard to just kind of take a... Take one specific area and hope it's right. It's better to use one of those build-up charts so you kind of know what to do. Cool. I did this- I did this by like four seconds, didn't I? <laughs> Hang on a sec. Are these all like four minutes? What if I actually got this by literally doing it in four minutes and 26 seconds and the time limit was four minutes and 26 seconds? Who knows, but that's kind of cool. <laughs> the only way to find out would be to kind of just relook at, to look at it while I'm editing this. The Rainbow Falls entrance. Ride pod feel nice, there we go. Well, that's useful. We needed that. The magic crystal. So we're going to go to the bottom right first. Nice. So we don't actually need anything else from here now. Am 
Max is kind of in a good position, gear-wise. And I mean, it would make more sense to farm enemies in Chapter 3 than to farm these enemies, because they'll give more experience. Let's just use Steve to take care of this. Hopefully this is the right way. It's only one way to find out. Well, there's two ways actually. I don't know if this will just so happen to be the map in a box, though. Who knows? Wow, it is. That's beautiful. And this is not the right way. We need to... It's not like extreme backtracking, but it is a little bit. Not some more rocks. We might get another ride pod full. Fuel, never know. I think I'm just going to... I'm going to get on Monica. Not to attack anything, because she has useless weapons, but... She just runs slightly faster than Max. So we'll kind of get to the exit quicker. Alright then. Well, we have all of the geostones, and these la these maps, these levels are complete for now. We'll come back to get all the medals at a future time when we're overpowered. <laughs> That's the best time to do this stuff, honestly. Well, we're just going to save up. All right. So we just went over to Sindane and I opened up the uh, Carpeterian. Uh, he just finished downloading all the Geostones we got. So we are going to have to go and get some followers now. I will have a standalone video for how to get every single follower. But we do need to get like five or six of them right now. So I'll kind of bring you guys over to it and tell you what to do. But in maybe a few days, I will also just have a, a video for how to get every single follower. And I'll just kind of use the footage from this video for the followers that I already obtain. And then I'll just have the new footage for all the other followers that we get. According to the Geostone you brought back this time, if we want to bring Jurak back, we need to get someone who knows about trees to immigrate to Sindane get someone to immigrate. That's right, there are lots of people living in Palm Brinks, right? You've got to get those people to immigrate out into the world. That way, the future will develop. Hmm, I see. And so what we need right now is someone who knows about trees, huh? Max, do you know anyone like that? Someone who knows about trees. Oh, I've got it. Gordon. Gordon. Yeah, he's our gardener. He's an expert on trees. He's perfect. I bet he's in our yard right now, tending to the flowers or something. At 3 o'clock in the morning? Maybe. Really? That's great. Let's go. Okay.
Uh, so basically to get this to work, you really just need to get Geo Stones from the uh, dungeon. You come here, you open the Carpeteria menu, you download it, and then you'll get that cutscene. And now you should be able to recruit characters to come and join you. Um, so first off, you need a holy water to get Gordon to join you, and we also, we're also going to get someone called Adele to join us. She, for her, you need to have some thick hide, some hunk of copper, and some sturdy cloth. You can also buy all this stuff here at Morton's Sundries. I'm going to run over there with Monica because she's faster. Oh, this guard here has a crush on Monica. Hi there, I work with Sheriff Blinkhorn. If you have any questions about the town, feel free to ask me. If you talk to them on Max, <laughs> they'll kind of just point out that he likes Monica. And you can buy holy water from the uh, church right over here. You can buy it from the priest there. Oh, Max, you've been moping about a lot lately. Are you taking care of yourself? Something I can do for you. What? You want me to go on your adventure? Hmm. I'd like to go with you, but this poor tree isn't doing so well. Taking care of the trees and the flowers on this property is my number one priority, you know. If I go off roaming about, I could lose my job. I bet some of the holy water that Priest Bruno sells at the church would fix this tree. But as you know, your father and Priest Bruno are on bad, on bad terms. Your father'd never give me money to buy holy water from Priest Bruno. I'm in a pickle. Max, fixing this tree is my number one priority. Now what I need to fix the tree is... This right here. Yes, Max, you've done it. Now I can take care of this tree. Thank you, Max. My work is all taken care of for now. Now I can go with you on your adventure. Oh, and don't mention that holy water to your father, you hear? Alright, well that's it. He's in our party now. We have enough Gilda to pick up uh, the other guy right here. but we'll leave him for a later time. He's not really necessary right now. So we're gonna go pick up Adele right now. So for her, you just need the sturdy cloth, the thick hide, and the uh, hunk of copper. You just talk to her. I see, I really wish that I could help you more than anything, but I don't have any confidence in myself. I always seem to give up halfway through, and I've never seen anything through. When I was little, I dreamt of becoming a tailor, and I tried many times to make something, but I never completed a single garment. If I went with you, I'm sure I'd just get in the way. So sorry, but no. Yes, if I try again and this time manage to complete something, maybe I'll believe in myself again. But I don't have the materials. Would you be able to get them for me? All I need is sturdy cloth, thick hide, and a hunk of copper. Here, have these. Thanks very much. Now I'll try making some clothes. I won't let these go to waste. So she just disappears, so just kind of come down here and then come back in, and she will be there waiting for you. Ah, uh, Max, I finally completed a garment. I didn't want to let the materials you gave me go to waste, and that kept me going to the end. I'm not completely satisfied with it, but would you wear it anyway? Ah, uh, it's so great to have finished something. 
Now I feel much more confident. I'll do the very best I can, so please take me with you. We're just gonna go here because it'll save us a lot more time. We're going to get Polly to join us now. You basically just run errands for her. Be my friend. <laughs> you want me to go with you? I'm just a woman who bakes bread, but if I can be of any use to you, I will gladly. Uh, but first, I've got something that needs delivering to Morton. Would you mind delivering the 20 loaves of bread to Morton's shop for me? While you're doing that, I'll pack for the trip. Wonder what on earth he could want with 20 loaves. It is a lot of bread. Hello. Ah, oh, you're helping Polly? Great. What will I do with 20 loaves? Well, I'm having a cheese fondue party today. In terms of your famous inventions, it's a culinary combination of cheese. Bread and wine. It's mighty good. Everyone eats loads, so that's why I need so much bread. But I didn't want it delivered here, really. Sorry, Max, but you couldn't take it to my house, could you? You know where it is, don't you? Near the pumpkin field? Now since we're right here, we may as well, uh, talk to her. You're Monica, right? I've heard you're not bad with a sword, but swords aren't playthings, you know. You have to think about what's in front of you. If you can build up a sword by about two levels, then I'll believe you got talent. Why don't you start with this Gladius? So you may have saw that uh, you can actually bring her other swords, but I've I've had glitchy playthroughs, so I just level up the Gladius twice, and I've never had a problem. So all it needs is Beast and Cyclone, but we're going to kind of have to go live to win on some enemies for maybe an hour or so, and build it up so we can get her to join us. And we do need her for 100% uh, Giorama in Sedane. So I'll kind of show you guys my favorite grinding spot. I find it to be the most effective. But we're going to take care of uh, the bread mission first. There's a note. Today's party's canceled because the cheese isn't thick enough. Well, alrighty then. Where am I going? Okay, so we're gonna go back to the sewers. Because it'll get us back there faster. Maybe it breaks immersion, but it saves us some time. <laughs> And time is precious. So we just talk to this guy again, and then he doesn't take the loaves. Then we talk to Polly, and we keep the loaves. <laughs> Cancelled, what a shame. In that case, I don't need the bread. Can you take it back for me? <laughs> Good way to screw somebody over, seriously.
What? How could he be so inconsiderate? Oh well, you have them. Never mind now, let's get going. So where are we off to? Cool. So we got Polly, Adele, uh, Gordon, and we are gonna get Mulane. I believe that is everyone that we need right now. So I'm gonna take you guys to my favorite grinding spot to level up Monica's sword. I actually just go to the Rainbow Butterfly Wood and just farm enemies in this first floor. All the enemies here are very weak and pretty easy to take out. They give more experience than enemies would in uh, Chapter 1. But everything here is very easy to do with Monica. This is some of the only grinding that's really necessary in the game, in my opinion. But yeah, just kind of go through here and clear everything out. And, um... I would recommend that once you get your sword to, like, plus three, then you can try and build it up. And then just do the same thing with the cliff knife, which is what it'll turn into. So uh, I'll see you guys when my sword's a higher level. Alright, we're back in Palm Brinks. So we, uh, leveled her sword up a bit. So what I personally did was... Well, there was only one option before to make it the cliff knife, and then I went for the bottom one here. So I have 24 flame, 12 lightning, 12 exorcism, and that was enough to build it up. You can pick either sword, it doesn't matter, but I feel like this one's more well balanced. It does have uh, that debuff, which will make it so it takes more um, weapon damage when you use it, but I think this sword is also just pretty good to use in general in the third chapter. It's a pretty strong sword. The other one's strong too, but this one's more well-rounded. well, well rounded. And you can use the stats better for a weapon later. So we just talked to her. Wow, that's a pretty impressive sword. Sorry, I had to test you. It's just that if I fight with an amateur, it's dangerous for me too. But I guess I needn't worry about that with you. Right, let's go fight together. Alrighty, so, to start up, I'm just gonna clean all this stuff up. <laughs> uh, here's a list of everything that you need, and I have a material total list, so you could just buy all of those mats if you want to. Alright everyone, so here's the Georama Guide. So we're at 0% right now, but we have everything that we need built and ready to go. So we're just going to start off with the eye trees. So you need to turn them around to face the withered Jurak over here. You want the eye on one side, the nose on the other. Let's just see if this is facing the right direction. Yes it is. Now the other eye. can't see the eye. Let's just put it down and see if it's in the right angle. No, it's not. It's kind of hard to see him. There we go. So, like this should be alright. Cool. Okay, so now we're going to put the river down next to him. Doesn't have to be beautiful or perfect, just as long as it's surrounded by water, it's fine. Okay, so that should have us up. Yes, so that's okay. Um, we're going to put down the Furbit House over here, next to the front of Sindane. So you have to have this placed with a wooden fence around it. I make 20 and it's good enough. Now again, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be around the house. If it lets you place it. There we go. Cool. 
cool. So now if we go down here, that uh, question mark is for having the uh, fence around the place. Okay, so we're gonna put the houses down now. You need three houses. Well, you need four, really. So we're gonna put down uh, this wooden stand over here. So this doesn't actually do much in itself, but if you put a house on top of a um, on top of a wooden stand, it'll give one extra culture point. This water wheel also gives us more culture, and it's also a picture that you're gonna want to take, so it's worth having this. You don't need these pot torches, but they are a picture, so may as well put them down. It also just look kind of looks cool. <laughs> well, we need to put these out anyway. Well, we don't have to, but they give culture, which we need. They give five culture points per. And we need this cart here, so Polly will actually move in. We'll put our straw house down here. Okay, so now we need to put out 10 trees. Doesn't matter where. Okay, so now we just need to move people in. If it lets me get out of this menu. There we go. So Adele's going in here. Polly's going in here, the one next to the cart. It's a requirement she has to actually go in. We'll put Mulane in here. And we will put Gordon in here. Ah, we didn't place 15 river parts, that's why. Now we're at 100%. Boom. Now it's time to go to the future. Something. We need to know about a being called Emperor Griffin. We suspect he's a terrible monster who's taken over the forces of darkness. He's been playing with reality across the different eras. I don't know what his true goal is. But if we let him keep at it, the whole world may disappear. He even erased you, Jurak, by destroying your origin point. We've got to stop him, or there's no telling what will happen. Jurak, I hear you've been reincarnated many times, but you keep the memories of your ancestors from the distant past. Isn't that right? So somewhere in those vast memories, you should be able to remember everything that's ever happened on this planet. You must remember something about Griffin. Who he is, where he is. Please tell us, Jurak, we must know. Griffin. Let's see. I'm afraid I don't remember. I'm truly sorry. 
My memories must not all be back yet, I guess. Master Jurek! Master Jurek, do you know about the Rainbow Butterfly? Hmm. Let me see... Rainbow Butterfly... I've heard of it... It's a very rare monster... But... It's not... like to meet it if possible. What should we do? They like the free flowers. You find the butterfly where the Lafresia grows. Really? Please tell us where does that flower bloom? Now there, I'm not sure. If they're not in Ourselves? Here, I'll give you this. Plant that in the woods, and a bud will grow. But it takes more than that for a flower to show. You need sun drops. Sun drops? They have the power to speed the growth of green things. Where can we get them? It's a kind of sap the monster Himara produces. You'll have to ask Ahimara. Hang on! Ask a monster? That's nuts! How can we talk to a monster? You must think of that yourselves. Alrighty. So we're going to have to leave and come back in. But there is just a person who mans that shop that we can buy a monster badge from, which will then let us transform into a Hamara. have no choice so yes we will and he only has one anyway <laughs> five hundred gilda we can just have Eric make more of these for us so we'll just sell some of these
Max, listen. What? If I use this badge, I can transform into monsters. I can change myself into the Hamara monsters Jurak mentioned. Then we can mix in with them and maybe get our hands on that sun drop we need. Got it! Nice! Then we'll be able to make the flower bloom. So let's go to the forest floor where the Hamara monsters show up. Okay! So most floors have the Hamara on it, but we can just go to the first floor and that'll be sufficient. So we can go back there again, but it's not really necessary right now. That's basically just to get our reward for 100% uh, completion. Uh, but we'll do that in a sec. Uh, for now, let's just go here. So I ran this floor about four times to get Monica's sword up to snuff. It was like 30 or 40 minutes or so. It wasn't that bad. It is still satisfying to level up the equipment anyway. Right here. So now we gotta get out of here. So I will see you guys in a sec. All right, so we got our sun drop and the seeds. So we're just gonna head over to the Rainbow Falls now. We're just gonna swap on over to Max. So we need to put the seed in first. If we can find it, <laughs> it's right here. That's definitely not a normal seed. That is, that's some magic right there. <laughs> I don't think things grow this quickly. <laughs> I don't think it's big enough. <laughs> Is this a flower? It's huge. It's a Lafricia. This is actually a scoop, but we're not going to take this picture yet. It's not missable. So we'll probably get it in uh, it, what's probably going to be the next video, I would say. I think these are Touch it? Ew, don't do that. It's fine, I'm sure. <laughs> These petals are huge. Actually, they're kind of gross. Well, yeah, it looks like they're covered in spider webs and there's tongues on every leaf. The legendary creature, Rainbow Butterfly. <laughs> Do. 
Okay. So you need to slap these tentacles. One hit on every one of them will is good enough. There is a scoop with this boss fight, and you don't want to miss it. Just kind of do what I do, and you won't miss it. So, you can't actually do anything right here. You just kind of watch this, and kind of let this happen. So you're going to have to actually hit the wrong butterfly on purpose. You start with the red one and then just kind of go left until you're kind of done. But we need to hit the wrong one so that we can see the thing's animation. Make sure to block right now because they all kind of chuck stuff at you when you hit the wrong one. So you have to take a picture of the guy coming back together. So just spam the picture button. There we go. Nice. Just do that and you'll get your picture. Make sure you don't delete the photo because we need to give it to Donnie. Well, we only need one. So yeah, we need to show that picture to Donnie. And those are all the missables in chapter two. So, it's time to beat the boss now. Don't let Max die, because you pretty much need the ride pod to do this fight. You can do it without the ride pod, but it's a lot easier with the ride pod with this cannon. Okay, so now we just kind of, since we have the picture, we're done. We can just do the normal fight. So just start with red and just go left. I think it's called counterclockwise, I believe. So just do that until you until until you win. It's pretty easy. So you're the ones that stopped me. Thank you. Are you the one that they call Holly? That's right. Holly is the name I went by as a human living among the little folk. So that means your real form is the rainbow butterfly? Why did you appear to the furbits in human form? Well, you see, I wanted to thank them. Thank them for what? Originally, I too was a tiny butterfly. Once, when I still wasn't used to flying through the forest, I got caught in a huge spider web. I couldn't get out of the web no matter how much I struggled, so I just took a deep breath and resigned myself to my fate. Just at that moment, some furbit folks came by and released me from the web. I was free. I flapped my wings with all my might and returned to the sky. They were waving as I flew off. They had saved my life, you see. My seven saviors. The years passed. I grew and matured as a rainbow butterfly. As a monster too, I found myself with plenty of magic powers. I used my powers of transformation to assume human form and approach them. I had wanted to give them something as a sign of my gratitude. But while I was living among them, I realized that the time I spent with them was more precious than anything. 
Before I knew it, I found myself wanting to spend the rest of my life as a human. Then why'd you disappear? The Furbits really miss you. Oh, that. There was sort of, um, an accident. A great, dark force from somewhere began to affect me. I was a monster, after all. And so this force awakened the powers of my original self buried deep within. I came to realize that I could never suppress the dark stirrings in my heart. There was nothing I could do but quietly leave their company. I've been hiding out in these woods, doing all I can to gain control of myself again. But the dark force got the best of me, and I was just a mindless monster when I attacked you. So that's what happened, huh? I can't go back to my old friends anymore. Would you please give them this letter? Okay, I'll be sure to give it to them. Perhaps the dark force that controlled me is what you'll be fighting from here on. It's an incredibly fearsome power. You must not lose against it. Please, win back our world. Well, I should be on my way. Goodbye. Let's try to get to Jurak. Okay. Griffin does not exist in our time. He shows up just a little in the memories of our distant ancestors. Seems he likes flowers. Huh? Flowers? That's what I remember anyway. I don't quite know the details. But Griffin was around in ancient times. He is sending some strong otherworldly powers into the present. He's controlling a lot of things. So Griffin is controlling the monsters in this era from ancient times. Which means his world is that of the distant past. That's right! So Jurak, how far back in the past is Griffin? You might 
want to ask Crest for the details. Crest? Crest the Great Sage, the greatest and wisest sage of all in my era. With the Moon Crystal, he can use vast astrological powers. He can see everything that happens in the world. Well, let's go and see him. Yes, good idea, but it's not that easy. Huh? Crest's origin point has been erased too. That's not a problem. We have the Carpenterian, right? Let's just revive Crest's origin point as well. Yes, exactly. Crest's origin point is the holy ground of Balance Valley. In the future, a great temple will be built there. That's where all the sages will gather. So that's where Crest will be. Let's get going. reasons that prevent me from staying with all of you. You might already have an idea of what those reasons are. But for me, the time we spent together was truly wonderful. Holly! <laughs> Farewell, everyone. Stay happy and healthy. You will always be my one and only family. Butterfly, it doesn't matter. Holly's just Holly Toss. You knew? Of course I knew. I could tell she wasn't human just by her scent. But if Holly chose to approach us as a human, that was perfectly fine too. We don't care so much for outer appearances anyway. By the way, Monica. What? We want to go with you two on your journey. What do you think? Really? You want to? Of course. With your help, we'll be able to put the world back to normal in no time. And so, our adventures in the forest came to an end. Holly, the mysterious woman who got lost in the forest, wasn't you, Mother. But for some reason, I wasn't surprised. I always felt you'd be at the end of this journey. Just about then, Borneo and the others finished clearing the rock from the tracks so the train could move on again. We set our sights on Balance Valley. We still have one more thing to do here. We need to go collect our reward for 100% completion. Token of my 
gratitude. Thanks, Master Jurak. That's it. So it's time to go to Balance Valley now. We're gonna come back for those chests in another video. So we just have to come and speak with Cedric. You want to leave? Yeah. All right, let's move him out. Wow, they even have a station here. This is Balance Valley Station. Huh. By the look of things, this valley's been hit as well. Hey, Max! We'll take care of things at this end. You take as long as you need. Thanks, Borneo. Go get them, kids. Be careful out there. Okay, I gotcha. Alrighty, so we did have to sell a lot of the bombs we got from Eric so that we could uh, buy some of those materials. So it's gonna, he's on the other side. So it's gonna be a good idea to just kind of get more because Monica will need them for one of her floors because it'll be just her and we have to fight golems and that's just not going to work out too well with just uh, her sword. So we pretty much need these bombs. But anyway, we are going to leave it here for this episode. So I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope this helped. And we'll see you in the next one. Have a good day. Bye.